if it is a fact about you that when you when you were praying to Jesus, you felt an upwelling of rapture, right? Subjectively, that can be an absolutely true thing to say about you. We can we can pair that subject of experience with an understanding of, of the, the neurophysiological basis for it. Uh, you can think about it in, in terms of a larger story about your life, but all of this can be translated into a fact-based discussion about what's happening for you. And, and, and my only claim is that, that, that the value part, and hence the ethics part, relates to the the extremes of positive and negative experience that people have okay, I'm not, in, in their lives. I'm not, first of all, I wouldn't dispute, I don't want to dispute the fact that there are stable qualia, pain and pleasure, for example, and also that there are fundamental motivational systems that structure our perception. So as the nervous system increases in complexity, these underlying uh, nervous system subsections that produce these rather stable qualia evolve. Hunger, thirst, defensive aggression, sexuality, all these subsystems that, that, that label experience with, with certain somewhat inviolable labels. I, I understand that happens. But the, the point that I'm, I'm trying to make here is, I think, to try to increase the, what would you call, the breadth of the conversation about how facts get translated into, into values. Because it seems to me the other thing that your account doesn't take proper, and this is what surprised me so much about your thinking when I first encountered it. See, I think the manner in which facts are translated into values is something that actually evolved, and it evolved over three and a half billion years, the three and a half billion years of life, and it built the nervous system from the bottom up, and it built this reducing mechanism that takes the infinite number of facts and translates them into a single value per action, and it does that in layers, and so there is a relationship between the world of facts and the world of values, and there has to be, but it isn't derivable one-to-one -one in the confines of your single existence through pure rationality. It's way more complicated than that. Well, well yeah, there's more to it than rationality, yes. I mean. Again, you, you, it's not rationality that causes you to remove your hand from a hot stove. And it's not rationality that causes you to like the experience of love and bliss and rapture and creativity over or more than pointless misery and, and despair. Right, right? so, so other like, thing, things other than rationality are clearly necessary, which is partly my Absolutely, point. but okay. the question is, do we ever have to be irrational to get the good things in life? And I would argue that, that the, the answer to that is clearly no. There's nothing irrational about loving your, your wife or your best friend or yourself or even a stranger. If, if, if we, what you mean by love there is genuinely wanting happiness for that person, genuinely taking pleasure in their company, genuinely wanting to, to find a way of being where you're, you're no longer in a zero-sum condition with a stranger or, or, or with a partner, but you're, you're collaborating together to, to have better lives. Well, it and, seems to and, me and that and you're so, not... So rationality moves through that situation continuously because rationality is the only way that you and I can get our representations of the world to cohere. It's, it's when mm -hmm. I say, okay, okay. okay there's, a, there's a lion behind that rock, don't go over there, that only, that, that only makes sense to you if you're playing this rationality game the way I'm playing it. If I mean something else by lion, or I mean something else by don't go over there, you know, you're confused and, and very likely dead or not. Well, so, right? if, so we're, if we're, if we're go trying to establish the proposition that rationality is the mechanism by which we make our worldviews cohere, I would agree with that in part. We also make them cohere because we're actually biologically structured the same way, and so there's a proclivity for them to cohere to begin with. But we iron out our differences through the exercise. I wouldn't call it rationality. I would call it logos because I think it's a more incorp it's a it's a broader and that this and is more where he's smuggling in Jesus. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I not you, unconscious of that. Let's say.